Hi, this is your favorite tea tea, your favorite babe, Kirsty Valentine. How are you all, my hot tea seepers? How are you all doing? I've got news today. This is about faith, Christianity, and seed, and the glamorous and luxury lives of our so called pastors. This is a case of a lady um, who is a trained nurse. She practices here in England, in London, and um, became a pastor under this pastor Dakbo Adeboyinga who is in charge of the UK branch of World Evangelical Bible Church Webeck. Basically what she did is that the pastor approached her and convinced her to go to the bank, Halifax Bank, to take a loan as he wanted, he wanted to use the monies to build a new church. So she went to the bank and took this loan. And the loan was for a um, hundred thousand pounds, so a hundred and ten thousand. There are some things that do not even correspond in the story that she's telling, because I think there is more to the story than meets the eye, because it's so contradictory. Anyway, the pastor told her that the um, loan was going to be paid over a five-year period as it was going to be for the church. So obviously, maybe they were expecting donations, goodwill donations from the church, so they'll be able to pay that loan within a five-year period. And that means if they are going to pay such amount of money within a five-year period, which means the money and interest will be reduced. And she later said that, that this pastor has refused to pay. The pastor has refused to respond to any form of her trying to contact him. That she has got the police involved and the police have bluntly told her that the solicitor will handle that. Because obviously there's nothing the police can do. He's not a criminal. The case is not. They can't just go and arrest him. So the solicitor will handle that. And what she has said is that... Um, she she has gone to her her solicitor and the solicitors have written numerous letter, uh, letters to the pastor which he has not bothered to reply pastor dakbo uh, adegboyenga himself and his brother and the wife that they all refused to pay back this loan they have cut all ties from her blocked her out and they have not paid a dime of this loan now this loan she later discovered that pastor um she later discovered that the loan was going to be paid over a 35 year period which means the interest of this loan will be more so when you add the interest of that loan to the original amount that they took it now amounted to almost two hundred thousand pounds which was a um one hundred and ninety eight thousand pounds that includes the loan that they were going to pay after 35 years and she what she's claiming is that the pastor told her one thing and he did something else and this is where i'm coming in if the pastor told you one thing and he said he was going to borrow a certain amount of money and exceeded the amount of money and said the loan was going to be paid within five years not and then you later found out that the loan was going to be paid over 35 years with such interest on whose name was that loan taken so it's not the pastor that will be communicating with the bank because the, the the loan is not going to be taken in his name the loan the loan was taken in your name this is why i say there are discrepancies in what she is saying which does not correspond to call the whole story short why would a trained nurse and a, 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 an educated human being lady take such amount of loan in the name of the church because the pastor told her to do it who do you worship do you worship the pastor or you worship the church. This is the problem in the black community where pastors, certain pastors, not all pastors, certain pastors who claim to be men of God, who claim to be child of God, who claim to be woman of God, brainwashing the church members to give a huge amount of money to the church in the name of planting a seed and getting a burden blessing back to the detriment of these people. A lot of African uh, uh, Christians in, in the UK 
are poor, are under the poverty line. When I say poor, I'm not saying they can't afford to live in their house or pay uh, 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 eat uh, three square meals. They don't have the luxury. What I'm saying is that they don't have the luxury to drive all these expensive cars that these pastors, both male and female pastors, glamorous ones, are riding. I mean, this pastor has a palatial mansion with huge swimming pool, huge driveway. He's got two luxury expensive range rover jeep he's got a rolls royce silver bed white sports two doors car luxury car he's got a lamborghini and he's got a bentley on whose name is it the church or on his name Apparently, he has had interviews with the local councillors and BBC, and there were issues about him urging his, uh, the young members of his church to sell blood for money, donate their blood to raise money for funds for the church. And it has been deemed as a court. A court. It has been deemed as a court. So he's had issues with that, and those are issues, I don't know if that is still ongoing. There are some members, ex-members who have come out to say that he has urged a lot of youths that the day they receive their student loan, they should plant it as a seed to the church. You see why a lot of marriages break up? You see why a lot of people are confused? You can't be vulnerable to that state where you worship the pastor and obey the pastor more than you will read your Bible, understand God, and obey God. People worship the pastor more than God. This pastor wears only designers. Fendi, Gucci, YSL, name it, is very glamorous. Read the Bible. The problem with people today is that they want shortcuts to, to solve their problem problem will come life is like a wailing sea oh up and down up and down up and down you just got to be patient you just have to know how to deal with it and ask god to lead you have faith in god people go through challenges even those who are rich in position go have more challenges than a poor man because they have more responsibility the people that, if you look at the audience in this church, some of these young youths, they are not looking well. Some of them, they have cheap hair on their hair. Some of the young boys are vulnerable. Maybe they are living in a room. Maybe they don't even have, some of them may be living in a hostel. Some of them may be living well. But taking advantage of these youths, asking them to donate their student loan to the church as a seed, it's ridiculous. She has brought out the statement the bank, the bank will come to you and always ask you for their money. They will take you to court. And as a nurse, you cannot be in that state of mind to be able to practice. I don't know if she's still practicing because she was a practicing nurse in England, in London here, before she now became a pastor. Under this pastor, Adegbo Yenga. She sent texts to her, the pastor's father in Ibadan. The pastor's father is also a pastor at Ibadan. And he he's, he's replied her that he should deal with it softly. And he has denied that he is not aware of his son's activities in London. He's also denied that his son, Pastor Dakbo Adegbo Yega, is planning to return back to Nigeria with his family. What do you expect the father to say? That you are saying the truth? So, my people, open your eyes and your ears. This is a story that it goes on day in, day out. Day in, day out. Christianity is so glamorized these days. This whole evangelical lifestyle, Lazarus lifestyle, started influencing Africa from the early 80s. When uh, with uh, uh, TV evangelical Pentecostal evangelism in churches on Sundays. I don't want to name any pastor now, but a lot of them were on TV. And they were all copying the American star. Luxury, opening universities. They, they open schools, they open universities. Fair enough, they do that. But there is another case about the Deeper Life Ministry that's been trending on, 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 on uh, uh, the media a long time. About a young boy who was being abused in the boarding house. 
in a church, in a, a, a school that belongs to a, a, a one of a, a, a Christian organization. The case is still ongoing. There is another case of another pastor from Malawi who has escaped his detention in South Africa and ran back to his native country in Malawi. There is another one who claimed to raise a dead man to life. So many issues. I wonder why these things are not teaching us common sense. What's up guys? Leave your comments. Share this video. Like. Press the thumbs up for like. Press that bell button for notification. In that way you know when a new video has been uploaded. My people, make you now open your eye. Make you now open your ear. Take your brain, come out if it's dirty. Use soap and omo, wash it, put it back and sew the skull back in to have common sense. Don't be befooled and be fooled and be a mufu and a bufu by these so-called glamorous pastors. Worship God, read the Bible, not the man, not the pastor. Anybody is, any, every man, every woman is a child of God. Every human being is a man and a woman and a child of God. Don't be fooled. Thank you very much. It's your favorite tea time spiller. Kirsty Valentine. Thank you.